so you guys may be like why is she wearing these uh uh cat ears well i am a uh, elementary school teacher so you guys will be excited um about that but anyway so this video is about um why god may have put you in a place where you're working with difficult people or difficult situations um now what i want to say is if you are in a place and things have seemed like or say a workplace and it's rigid it's cold um maybe things are run like very strategically um versus a family atmosphere and say maybe where you worked at before it wasn't like that you know maybe you're a social butterfly and things are a little cold and it's taking a little while to warm up and you're you feel out of place you know um i want to say that god places us in in places and around people for a different purpose and sometimes it's so we can be the light right and we can bring what we're looking for and i remember i remember i remember strategically in a specific job i was working i prayed about a leader doing that for the staff our staff and god said why don't you do it i want you to do it and i'm like really okay fine you know and i thought i heard it and eventually got used to in that place to you know help bring some light and some joy and it just spread like wildfire and sometimes people need that push sometimes people have been through difficult situations sometimes people don't know or don't feel safe enough to let their hair down sometimes they don't trust and when you you know you're bubbly and, and, and trust me it's not always received very well because some people are they're not going to remember but you're sowing seeds of kindness and it's going to sprout up it's going to give birth to something great and when you do that you lead by example i call it leading from the back right and and you don't have to be in a certain position to be a leader you could be a natural leader where you bring out the best in others right and you respect them and you help them and a leader is a servant so it's a hard job because people will always come to you for their solutions but you're going to feel warm and fuzzy on the inside and so god may also be trying to speak to those bitter places in your life or you know that place in your life where it's hard to receive love so it's, it's so important to use the scriptures where it says overcome evil with good because you're not wrestling against people you're wrestling against powers and principalities in high places meaning they are above they are satanic so you know you can't see them with the naked eye so if it's a spiritual fight you don't use spirit physical weapons so you overcome evil with good because you're you're dealing with the spiritual world right and so again like i said you use spiritual weapons what are your spiritual weapons prayer fasting okay and in the in the process god is forming you into a vessel of light and he's he's changing your character so you will know how to be good to your enemies and i remember it says i'm a teacher i use storybooks as an example um enemy pie if any of you guys are educators you know about enemy pie it was a, a book about a boy and he had a, a enemy in his neighborhood and he was asking his dad how do you get rid of enemies and he, he he invited the boy over you know and he's thinking his dad for pie to eat pie and he's thinking his dad's gonna put all kind of yucky stuff in the pie to make the boy disgusted and to feel all kind of ways and really it was to befriend him and turn his enemy into a friend and that is very possible when you start thinking good thoughts and you really pray for those who persecute you because when jesus was on the cross and he said um father forgive them for they don't know what they're doing he meant that he meant that he wasn't waiting for their demise he really meant it okay okay and then when judas betrayed him he said do you betray the son of god with a kiss come on you guys jesus was full of love right he's the son of god so that's you know what god wants for us he's 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 changing our character and he, he and, and my one of my bosses told me this before she said and i never ever forget it she said god cannot be everywhere you know physically and and represent like he's moving he's able to impact us but he he has vessels of honor 
planted in places. So he uses men, people, mankind to do his work. And I, I will never forget that quote she gave me. And it's the truth. It's nothing but the truth. And it really helps us to understand that we are necessary. So he transforms us. When we come into fellowship with him, he transforms us so we can become vessels of honor, so he can use us to his glory. And it's not anything big and spooky. His glory is manifested every day. His, his mercies are manifested every day. And somebody who's mean to you and nasty, they need love the most. And maybe you reflect who they are. Seriously, I remember I met a leader before in my life, or one of someone I used to work for, and I saw some similarities. And God placed me in their place because I could tell that this person was in pain. I could tell this person had been hurt. I could tell this person had been betrayed. I could tell that this person had given their heart to people and they didn't respect them after they saw their side, that side, right? And God showed me that and said, you know, that's why this person acts this way. And it's not personal. So if you take things personal, when, when it, it, and it's an attack, you're not going to grow because you're thinking, me, 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 that hurt me, me, me. Well, you know what? Forgive them. It actually, the Bible says that it is, it helps your own soul. You're generous to your own soul when you overlook an offense. Yep. When you overlook an offense, you're good, you're doing good to your own soul. Because you're, you're becoming, you're, you're going to a higher level. You know, people say, I want to go to another level. What does that mean? When you go to another level, you're elevated spiritually in your spiritual life and you mature. You know, you're not that little seedling anymore. You're, you're sprouting, you know. And then God expands your territory because he can trust you not to be vindictive, right? Not to try to get back at someone. People have good and evil in them. We have a sinful nature. So those two forces are present, battling to, to win over one another. So just like you see that person's flaws, there, there's something good there. And God sees what's good there. And, and when you start to see things that are good there, don't rationalize it away. That's what you're supposed to be seeing because you're a woman of God or a man of God. You're supposed to see the good in them, right? Don't think, the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world anymore. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind needs to be renewed so you can learn how to walk and operate in the kingdom of heaven instead of the ways of this world. You understand? And so we'll get into Galatians 5 a little later and talk about the fruits of the spirit and the fruits of the flesh. Love, gentleness. These are fruits of the spirit. Love, gentleness, faithful, faithfulness, kindness. You know, against, against those things, there is no law right those are things that we should be doing those are things that god does not despise right you know and i love i love the way he's working i love the way i mean you, you guys I, I love where i work you know it wasn't always like that i didn't have those relationships i felt isolated i felt you know i felt like man you know i was trying to find my place you know i, I wanted a family again i remember being at schools where it, it was a family you know i love love i love you know being cuddly and just you know, just happy, and, and God really, really opened up, and so I persevered, I was able to persevere, he put people in my path, and my relationships got better, but you've got to persevere, you've got to endure hardship like a soldier of Jesus Christ, let me tell you why my eyes weren't, it's because I remember when it wasn't that way, I remember going through a loss, my, losing my grandmother, and I remember being crushed, I remember being hurt, and I needed some compassion. I needed a shoulder to cry on. I needed, and I'm going through all of this, and I still have to come smiling. I still have to come with all of my raw emotions. And God, thank you. He put people there in my life who was kind to me. And so as a result, I, I wanted to do the same. And people say, oh, you don't have to be friends with people you work with. Well, maybe not friends, but you, you're, you're a family. You're close. You know, people lose people. They lose their parents. They lose loved ones. And they share that. These are people you see every single day. Why can't you love them? And so you pray for your leaders. You pray for your bosses. You really genuinely have a heart to see them do well because they're people too. They're people too. And they may be experiencing things that you don't know anything about, you guys. You don't know anything about. So you don't have to fight your own battles. He said the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And God... God he, he lets his rain and his sunshine on the, the good and the bad, right? 
and that's and that's that's his character he wants us to have that character he really wants us to love the way that he loves and wants and the bible says god is love he, he he's the very essence of love right and so that's where his grace comes in it's not just reserved for saints not reserved for the righteous it's reserved for the unrighteous too and not that they're not capable of being righteous but you were once a mess right and so when Jesus looked at people and he loved them, he really wasn't sarcastic. He really loved them. Come on, y'all. It's hard, but it's possible. It's possible because you're going to be like Christ. So you want to see these people whole. You want to see these people warm. You want to empathize with people. And, and somebody said a quote um, I, I heard one day that said, um, you know, be nice to someone that's mean to you because they need it the most. And not to say that like you're throwing shade. They do need it the most. When I was mean and nasty, I needed love the most. When you lose a, a, a person close to you, you're, you, you're angry. You, you can become angry. You can become distant. You can become resentful, right? You can, I mean, really, you know, there are a lot of things you can become. So I just, I really needed to pray and, and ask God to... Uh, to help me with that so you know these are tears of joy that i'm crying because he's brought me a long way he's allowed he's opened up a place and i just pray that next my workplace can become a place of prayer where we connect with god and we give him everything and that's one thing i want to close with don't be afraid to be you if you're a woman of god or you're a um, man of god don't be afraid to be that and i'm not talking about being religious now come on you know everybody know people walking around their bible hitting people upside the head with it. <laughs> ain't nobody doing that you know what i mean but you want people to uh, to really, really be, you know, it, you you want to be yourself. So you want people to accept you for who you are. And, 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 and God puts you at a place that your gift will make room for you. There, You don't need to be anxious for anything because anything that's supposed to be yours, it shall be. But he wants you to hum be humble. And so if you're going through a hard time, he wants to humble you as well, right? Because in his divine season, you're going to reap what you sow. And meaning, in a good way, your, your good seeds are going to crop up. You're going to reap that. Like people say that in a negative way sometimes, like, oh, you know, you're going to reap what you sow. Well, you're going to reap good things that you've sown as well. So I pray that this helped you. I pray that it encouraged you. These are Car Chronicles with T. I pray that your light shines brighter, shine brighter, shine brighter. Until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.